Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing today? I actually uh, personally feel a bit tired, but from here, you guys look all fresh and ready to officially close Act Me 2017. Um, you might have seen that my colleagues and I of communications and events, we've been running around the place for five days. And before that, of course, we had the long build-up to uh, the Congress. And I wonder, what are we going to do next now that it's all over? So, as I was flicking a bit nostalgically through some pictures of the last few days, I couldn't help but focus on hands. I mean, your hands, actually. Um, there were quite some in the pictures. And I realized actually that hands tell stories and they also do st tell a story about Act Me 2017. I'm just going to show you a few. You know, these hands to me, they say, wow, there was a lot of great content out here. Some of it was cutting edge, huh? uh, but we also raised new issues. But we also summarized what's really at stake, huh? or pointed at what really needs improving and soon. But then there were also some hands saying, oh, let's be careful here and let's really see and reconsider if this is the right way to go. But most of all, there were hands and we were taking a snapshot, a picture of the state of health worldwide today. Um, I have more hands. I saw more of them, but I will not bore you further with my fetish for hands today. Um, and I will go over to introduce the speakers of today of the official closing session. And first up will be uh, Sarusha Govender, our journalist, journalist in resident, residence at the moment. Uh, you have actually seen her face, she's a familiar face, through the daily video wrap that you have been receiving in your inbox each and every day. She will give you a very personal take on ECMI 2017 in words and in moving images. By the way, Sarusha is not the only journalist in residence at the conference. Uh, we also have Dawood, uh, Mohamedou and Andrew. And they actually make sure that the echoes of this Congress go as far as uh, Zimbabwe, for example. And there will be actually coverage for audiences around the world also in the weeks to, to come. Uh, after Sarusha, we'll move to somebody you have already seen here on stage, the president of FestMe, Carlo Geiselink, um, who will actually introduce the following speaker. Uh, and that person has a message for you and an invitation for September 2019. Last but not least, of course, we have to really call it a day in an official way. And uh, that's a job for the Congress chair, um, Bruno Greisels. So without further ado, please give a warm welcome to Sarusha Govender. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon already. And uh, welcome to this ACME closing session. And I hope you've all had a very productive day and a very productive week here at ACME. I know I have. With more than a hundred sessions in all of these crazy rooms all over this beautiful venue. I hope you've managed to find what you needed and get what you needed out of this conference. And so for those of you who don't know who I am yet and looked at the agenda for today and wondered why a journalist was going to be speaking um, at a scientist convention, I'll explain a little bit. I'm the ITM's journalist in residence this year. Every year they have one who comes from the developing world to get a better sense of some of the work European scientists are doing here and to get a better understanding of all the work that goes into what you do so we can write better stories in the future. So I've been here since September. And I've been meeting with scientists, having conversations with them, and meeting in their labs, and having the most amazing discussions about their work and what drives them. And really what it's been is that I've had a chance to do what most science journalists never get a chance to do. It's a rare luxury, which is spend time with scientists without the pressures of deadlines. 
So we've had very informal discussions about what their passions are, why they do the work they do, or why you do the work you do, and what you want to see happen in the future, what you want to see happen from funders, what you want to see happen in the industry, and you've all been very vocal about what you want to see happening in the media when it comes to covering your work, and I've been listening. <laughs> um, They've also been very um, expressive about what you want to see in the media beyond the press releases, beyond the outbreaks. You want to see a better understanding of your work, and I understand that too. Um, it's been illuminating as well to hear all the complaints about the media. So thank you. We're not, we're not thick-skinned people. We can, we can take it. You can tell us what you don't like about the media, and we'll work to improve it. Um, the researchers have also told me um, I've asked, gotten a chance to ask me questions about the way the media works and I've also been happy to explain the media production process and why their work maybe isn't portrayed in the way they want it portrayed and how they can make that better in the, pro in the future. So really, there's been lessons learned on both sides, from the researchers I've spoken to and from me personally. Um, and one question in particular they've also asked is, when they are quoted wrong, who do they blame and who do they call to complain? Um, and all I can say is, it's not me. Um, I can't take responsibility for all the media that misquote you, but I'm happy to point you in the right direction if you meet me later. <laughs> um, from my side, I've also learned about the commitment of the researchers and about the painstaking precision of your work. Um, and a story from just yesterday that I learned about how painstaking that precision is, is that I learned when you're covering African sleeping sickness and you are filming in a tsetse fly breeding colony and where the researcher really needs to pay attention to what they're doing and not be distracted, it's not a good idea to ask lots of questions so that the tsetse flies can wake up and escape. Because when that happens, it's a crisis. For me personally, because I grew up in Africa, so tsetse flies on the loose are terrifying. And for the researcher, who will now spend the next several weeks tracking down every single um, marauding tsetse fly and probably get bitten by them. So I apologize for that. Um, lesson learned. Um, also filming in labs here at the ITM, I've learned that when researchers are filming things that are very technical, uh, not to distract them because they will make mistakes and asking what's that every 10 minutes is illuminating for me because journalists are curious, but it's annoying for everyone in the lab. So also, lesson learned. Thank you very much. Here at the conference in particular, you've seen me also be very annoying, um, popping up in the back of your sessions with my cameraman and our big camera, annoying you over lunch or coffee while you're eating a big muffin and putting my camera in your face and saying, hey, what do you think about the conference? Um, so I apologize for that as well, occupational hazard. Um, <laughs> but thank you for those of you, to those of you who did um, answer my questions. And to those of you who've been trying to dodge me all week, I have your cards, I'll find you. <laughs> you can't dodge me forever. Um, so joking aside though, um, this week has been a real eye-opener for me personally. The general media tend to overlook conferences like this, and I mean the mass media, because they think they're too technical. Um, and there's this misperception that our mass audiences won't understand them. But it's just that I found, it's a misperception. Because what I've learned is that your work is so incredibly vitally important for audiences to know about. And it's anything but technical, especially when I get a chance to talk to you about what drives you. And you've seen some of those talks this morning with the passionate researchers and the way they can talk about their work. Um, it's something I feel should be covered more in the media, and we'd love to help you do that. Um, what I've really learned as well is that this this conference in particular has been a real crucible for debates um, on public health systems in the developing world, on maternal health, on mental health, on neglected diseases and viral hepatitis, funding and aid. So many topics have gotten us all so riled up and involved, and I think it's great for you as a science community, but it's also great for everyone to see how, how vital and how charismatic this community is and how people should keep up with the debates. And what's really surprised me, and, uh, too, is the balance between the North and the Southern voices. It's a re and a really strong showing of young researchers. 
In my experience covering all of these science forums, it's really hard to find diverse voices, but I haven't found that problem yet. And that's a real feather in your cap because this is a very well represented conference. There's been so many young researchers here from the developing world, and they've had a very strong voice. And for those of you who say young researchers are sometimes disruptive, they have a lot of opinions, they always want to express them, um, that's, that's a good thing because they bring fresh opinions to the debate as well and they're challenging and energetic, and I think they've embodied it, this concept of switching the poles that ITM has promoted so well over the years. But I don't want to just tell you about all the voices of ACME that I've gotten to speak about, I've uh, speak to. I've also compiled a little video of all of the voices of ACME, which I thought you might enjoy watching, so roll video. <laughs> So it's uh, clearly a very important uh, place to be because uh, there's a lot of opportunity for exchange and uh, you know, uh, and in increasingly in the world today, collaboration seems to be a bigger thing than competition, and uh, especially for things like health. So all of us young researchers, we are really looking forward to opportunities to collaborate, to network, as well as exchange uh, with uh, various uh, young researchers and senior researchers from around the world. So ECMI is a great place to be uh, in that sense. Um, the most interesting part for me was um, the opening session when we had Professor Lake. I, I, I thought it was amazing what she talked about. Uh, I thought she was um, real. Um, she wasn't coating things, sugar coating things, and she talked about you know what the reality is on the ground. Yeah, it gives a chance to engage people who are already involved in the field. Uh, it gives chance to form collaborations between either South and South or North and South. Uh, I've had interactions from other people who are in the South where we have agreed to form sort of uh, some consor small consortiums where we can collaborate uh, and work on that. And I think for me, this is the exciting thing. Uh, collaborations, and you also get ideas of certain things which you actually realize, oh, I can go back and do something like this. Maybe at low cost or in partnership with other people. I'm happy to be part of the global health policy debate because the sort of voices that come from the global south are always important um, to feedback and to, to inform the discussions that happen on the global field. In that um, the session about teaching and learning, I learned from other continents that they also have this kind of program to train um, community workers as well as we have that in Thailand too. So we share some experiences about um, the program. makes me to have the opportunity to share and to learn from my colleagues uh, from all over the world and in that way we will, will be able to, to uh, make a difference easier for, in order to improve the, the health for our future generations. This is an opportunity to share some of my thoughts as a researcher coming from the developing world. Um, I particularly would like to urge the scientists over here to invest more in rethinking about the health system in a, from a global uh, health perspective. It's very important, we need to be smarter. I think the challenges are moving very fast and we need to be smarter as researchers to, to make those complex challenges simple to grasp simple to understand, simple to communicate, and it will require a lot of processing to, to reach that effort. And This morning I went to a session where it was all about enabling equity, and I think we're moving in the right direction. And coming from a country where we have so many challenges, it, it augurs well for us. I think that for us the important part is to be involved in all the sessions and also have to raise questions and to uh, encourage the discussion about the different, the different topics. I think that we are having a space in these global spaces and that, that's really uh, interesting and I'm really happy because of that. I 
think uh, at the ethnic at conference is uh, uh, a great venue and opportunity for me and other researchers to meet and share our uh, common interests and also share uh, our findings and also I think that it's uh, uh, a place that can inspire us to continue uh, the work that we are doing in the field despite all the challenges that we are facing uh, when conducting research. I definitely think it's useful. I think the importance of global discussions are that they are indeed global. And so that means um, leaving space for voices from places we don't often hear. Um, I think this conference in particular has done well. It's evolved over time. And so we see that there is more space for the voices of the Global South. Um, what I would love to see in the future is that we expand that space. So we move beyond researchers and scientists speaking to one another and really teaching um, other sectors, whether it's business, whether it's government, uh, even communities, how can we broaden this discussion so it really involves many more of us um, and so that as researchers and scientists we can actually um, make our, our knowledge practicable and make our knowledge actually work for change. Thank you to all of those researchers um, who participated and who added their voice to the debates. It was wonderful chatting to all of you. Um, and I think what came out of those, those little talks was that the debates and conversations were really important to you guys. Um, and it really resonated with you. And I'd encourage you to take those conversations forward and these connections forward when you leave ACME because those will be what really helps us all make a difference um, going forward from a media perspective. Um, I've also been talking to you, many, uh, many of you uh, throughout the week about other things you've enjoyed about the conference. Many of you have mentioned the food, and that's good, because the food has been great. Um, many of you have mentioned that it's been great to talk to people outside of your core discipline that you don't really get to interact with every day, and that has been a great, great part of this conference too. Some of you have mentioned that you've been talking to some of your colleagues over email for years and you've met for the first time here and that's also wonderful. Um, you've told me um, that you also have an interest in communicating more with media and you've talked to the other journalists and residents and others who've had the same problems with the media as you have and you've come up with solutions and ways to go forward and that's also great because conversation is the thing I want to leave you guys with the most in that when you build these connections with each other and with civil society and with other partners, please don't forget building relationships with the media as well. We need to be part of this discussion that you're having about the challenges in global health and how you want to solve them. It's not helpful to ignore the media and hope that when you have a press release or when it comes to results release day that you get some good coverage because the media are not going to understand what you're doing unless you explain it to them. So you need to learn to make us your partner the whole way through the journey. Um, and a great way forward would be um, to engage with media like a relationship. Make contact, build trust, keep that conversation going and give the media a space to ask stupid questions. In my time at the ITM, I've asked so many stupid questions, but I've come away with a greater understanding of the complexities of what you do. And that's essential for the media because if they feel that if they ask a stupid question, scientists are going to be hostile to them, they won't ask. And that's a danger to everybody. Um, and so when we understand your work better, we can write about it with a lot more justice. Like any relationship, this is going to require a lot of work on both sides, and in some cases, some counseling, perhaps. Um, 
we're go both going to have to fight this inherent distrust that we have of each other and realize that we really are all on the same side. We're all trying to tell good stories. I promise journalists are not trying to misrepresent your work. We're not trying to misquote you. We're not trying to make it seem like you're not doing your job the way you should. It's probably just a misunderstanding and working on that relationship and cultivating um, these partnerships going forward is a good way to eliminate that. And if you can help, with, uh, help us do a better job, that's going to be even better in the future. Um, when, I'm, when I'm not a journalist, I'm also helping train scientists on how to talk to media. And uh, just a few days ago, I was talking to one of the scientists from back home in South Africa about the media training he's had because his organization has now made it compulsory for the scientists to have media training for interviews. And he showed me a little booklet which has a checklist on how to prepare for interviews. It was, you know, come prepared with the questions you want to answer, stay on message, um, don't deviate, and all of these things I'm sure some of you have come across at least once, how to deal with the media. And I think really with my training, what I do is, is tell people that's the wrong approach. It makes the media sound like we're out to get you and you need to defend yourself, and that's really not the case. Books like that and, and um, training like that is a good starting point, but remember, it's just to help media and journalists understand each other. The key focus of this should be that conversation and the partnerships and the relationships you build because it's less likely that the media is gonna misunderstand your work if they've had time to follow you over a long period of time and really get as passionate about your work as you are yourselves. Um, so if I have to leave you with one message today, it would be to keep this discussion going with each other and with us, the media, and to keep challenging each other and to, get the right, right, to help us all get the right message across as often as we can. And if you're comfortable with it, go make friends with a journalist. You don't have to go to a news station, but journalists often reach out to you for um, quotes or information about your work. Try and cultivate those relationships because those journalists are showing an interest and a curiosity about what you do. And those are the, those are the right people to reach out to and start to build these relationships going forward. Um, and I assure you, if you try and do this in the future, you'll be a lot happier and more positive about your relationships with the media and the coverage that you get from us. So I want to thank you all for listening to me um, address you today, and I want to thank ACME for having me and ITM for having me this whole time. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Okay, dear friends and colleagues, looking at the, uh, the big family video, I come to realize that really this is the end of the, of the conference. I hope the learning was good, and I hope the sniffing was good as well. But the question is, is this really the end of the conference? Of course we have come to the end uh, of the stage where we went shopping to the marketplace, a huge in this case, luxurious marketplace with our bag. And we had the, all those stands over there, really a lot. And we were passing by. Sometimes we were sniffing also at the products. We were uh, discussing maybe with the marketeer, engaging, and eventually buying something from one stand and putting it in our bag. And we also encountered a lot of people on the market, had a nice chat, but of course, that's not all of the story. Because after the market, you go home. You look in your bag, you see what's in it, and with the ingredients, you start cooking. So I eventually hope that this conference will lead to new questions, new insights, new actions, new collaborations, and who knows, new friends. And in this perspective, this conference may not be a one-time shot, but be embedded in a really longer process of learning, of collaboration, and maybe living together as a, a global community. If Churchill would be here, he would say, it's not the end, it's not the beginning, but it's the end of the beginning. Now, 
I know Bruno is going to express a more extended vote of thanks, and I don't want to. In I wouldn't dare to interfere with that. But nevertheless, I know Bruno is quite shy, or maybe might, might be too shy, to highlight his own role within this conference. And I would like to take the opportunity, really, to thank you, Bruno, for the audacity and the commitment towards this conference. Because from the start, you were really were enthusiastic about this, and you went for it from the start. And really, this is, uh, this is really, really, really necessary. Because we cannot do this as a society. We need the support of institutional partners such as ITM to organize such a conference. So Bruno, really, really a great thank of us all. Now you have seen this picture there, and it looks to the future. And regarding the future, I have two questions for you. First one, can those of you who think it may be worthwhile to organize such a conference in future somewhere else in Europe, think, if you think that it's a, this is a great idea, can you raise your hand please? God, God. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know if I have to thank you or curse you for that because it's, uh, <laughs> this is a lot of work. But it's good to have an evaluation straight like this. So um, thank you for this, for this uh, response. Now, a second question. Does anyone recognize where this picture has been taken? fewer hands you know sorry I never went to Liverpool so I can't give you the answer I don't know if it's the right answer but I know someone who can really confirm or deny this answer so I ask someone to come up and tell more about this picture and more about the future thank you Good afternoon. My name is Tamar Gosh. I'm the Chief Executive of the Royal Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene. Based in the UK, we're a 100-year-old membership society with 1,000 members from 43 countries working to improve tropical medicine and global health around the world. And I'm really excited to be here to tell you about the next ECTME in 2019. Before I do that, I do want to add my thanks to Bruno, to ITM Antwerp, and also to Carol and to the Federation of European Societies for putting on such an incredible Congress this year. It's slightly daunting. I'm pleased to say we have two years, so uh, you have less time to remember the great things and we have more time to make our next Congress even more wonderful. I'm going to share with you a short video to give you a clue as to where we'll be going next.
on the edge of the docks in Liverpool, 15th to the 20th of September, in two years' time, we hope to welcome you again. 2019 is a really important year. For the Federation of European Societies of Tropical Medicine and International Health, it's the 25th anniversary. So not only will we have some great content, we'll have a good party. And it's a time to reflect. What's the last quarter of a century meant for your area of work in tropical medicine or in global health? And what do you hope to see in the next quarter of a century? These are two questions I'd like to ask you if you'll be joining us in the next, well, in two years time for the conference. But 2019 is also a really important year for the UK. A time to demonstrate the importance and relevance of collaboration with our European partners within the Federation. And indeed that collaboration has just started. In working towards the Congress in two years, uh, we've got the great support of the Swiss GMH, um, of ITM, Antwerp, and of the London and Liverpool schools of tropical medicine and hygiene. So that collaboration is starting. And that's so important because without that collaboration, we can't add our piece in to really drive impact for tropical medicine and global health for all of us. So we hope to welcome you in two years' time. When you get your feedback forms, I think they're coming tomorrow, please uh, fill in the parts about the Congress this year. We want to really learn from how you've experienced this week so that we can make sure that we design the next one in the best way possible. And please tick the box that says you want to hear from me to tell you all about the plans for 2019. So finally, thank you for staying to this moment. Um, and I really look forward to welcoming you in 2019 in Liverpool in September. Thank you so much. Good morning, good afternoon, We're somewhere in between. Uh, as a true director, I have the privilege to speak at the beginning and to speak at the end and shut up in between. So I'm happy, really, that everything has gone well. I believe that we have had a very interesting week, a very enjoyable week. And in fact, I must say that, uh, just as Carl, just said from the beginning, and Carol, you're the first person ever to call me shy, I believe. So uh, I'm modest, but not shy. <laughs> uh, but it's true that two years ago we, had, we felt in our guts what we wanted to do in uh, two years. And this has crystallized, actually, sometimes mostly bottom up. But what we certainly wanted to show is that European tropical medicine and uh, or sorry tropical medicine and international health in Europe is is very much alive and is a very relevant discipline is a very exciting discipline and that is something what we really want to bring forward during this meeting and that we needed of course first of all a good audience with lots of young people with lots of people from developing countries, we have really invested in that. And I think this is probably of all the most important factor in, to my feeling, having made this conference such a, a success and such an enjoyable week also. We really felt the positive vibes all the time and um, a, a feeling of happiness to be among each other. And as you have said already, also having these different disciplines being together, discussing, and uh, really bringing the best out of all of us. So, I really am satisfied myself. What we had in mind has been done, and I think even in a more enjoyable way than we would ever have anticipated, and that is thanks to you. I have one frustration, and I'm sure that 
all of you share it, but as an organizing, it's more that is that I have not been able to go to all sessions. I have not been able to talk to all of you. I have not been able to eat all the sandwiches. Uh, but still, I mean, this is the price of uh, being at such a conference. You have to kill your darlings, as they say, to kill many darlings. But still, I have the feeling that I have met so many people that I've seen, so many interesting sessions, and hear so much debate from every corner of the world and from every discipline imaginable in sciences and in implementations, let's not forget. There are many people to thank, and that's also not only my duty, but truly a pleasure for doing all this. And I would really, first of all, want to thank the entire staff of ITM, for which this has really also been an opportunity to bring the best out of everybody, to bring the best out of ITM. We have, over the past years, been searching for our soul and for our brains in the 21st century. And as I have hinted at the beginning, we, in a very simple way, we have envisioned a coin with two sides, and one is scientific excellence and the other is societal relevance. And I have told you in the beginning how it reflects also in the motto of this meeting, namely world-class science for worldwide development. But in fact, underlying values are certainly as important and I would especially want to number three of them, uh, which have been a guiding motto of this meeting. One is equity. And equity, of course, there are many aspects in equity, but one I want to highlight here is equity also between researchers and scientists among the world. And for the first time, I think, in my career, I really have felt that we are coming into a new era where the north-south relationships are not important anymore, where we feel we are all part of one community, one girl with one level of expertise, and talking to each other as scientists and not people from the north speaking to people from the south, particularly among the young people among us. And I hope that we, when as people and dinosaurs, as, uh, as me and some others here, you know, slowly fade away, that this new generation is, is going to take over and really change the face of, you may call it global health or, or international health, uh, whatever. But I think we have a great f future in this way. Another value which has come to the surface many times is maybe you haven't heard it in, in very explicit ways, but is integrity. Integrity as scientists, and in our trade, and in our time, certainly, independence and integrity versus our funders. This is not an easy task for many of us, uh, because we depend so much on funding agencies that are not necessarily interested in good science, but rather in direct impact, or others that are very interested in nice science, but don't bother very much about what you have to do with it. And I think we have to find a continuous balance, and I think this meeting has actually shown the right way. And a final value which is underpinning this all, not the final, but I think the, the most important one, is social justice. And there has been a lot of discussions here, and I've been very pleased to listen to some of them and to participate among the journalists, among the scientists, and which is, I mean, just to paraphrase it, where does the science or where does the journalism ends and where does activism starts? And the discussion there is, can we be scientists, hard scientists being objective and at the same time carry values without, say, um, compromising our science. And my, my answer is very clear that, of course, of course we can and we must. I think social justice and equity between people, it's not, not a, a, a hypothesis that can be denied or, uh, or confirmed. It is simply a basic value. And if we put that as a basic value, 
uh, a kind of dogma, not a dogma, that's a no, the wrong word, but um, uh, a kind of given like we have in mathematics, this is simply a truth, a universal truth, which we have to strive for, then you can build your science around it. So, congratulations, all my staff. Sorry, not my staff. You see, I'm not very shy. I'm also, but all the staff of ITM, the scientists, the support staff. I mean, you have seen them all here. Even the accountants paying out the per diems to people who do not have a visa card or so. So they really have done a tremendous job, all of them, for two years. And I'm very, very proud to be the director of that institute. There are a few specific people who I think you have seen throughout this uh, conference and have really been amazing, and I, I truly mean it, really been amazing in uh, keeping this conference on track to organize it all, and then by the end of the day, having even all reports and movies and tweets grouped and sent to you. And so I would really like to thank very specifically the three people who I believe have been the most important for this meeting. That's first of all, Anne Buvet, who has chaired the scientific committee. And Anne, you have really done, I think, of course, with many people in the scientific committees, and I mean, we could give a flower to each of the scientific committee, but without you, it would not have been possible. And just not only by your broad view on many sciences, but also your partnership qualities, really congratulations. I really would like to stress that this was teamwork, which I enjoyed very much. So I take these flowers on behalf of the whole scientific committee. So, and as you can imagine, uh, a meeting like this is not just organizing abstracts and sciences and so on, but it's a lot of nitty gritty administrative work, logistical work, reminding me in the first place, you know that another deadline is coming, arranging all the travel grants from all over the world and the different funding. So Anne van Geizerben, who has been the coordinator of the organization of this, uh, this event, please, many, many thanks. This lady really has had some stress and suffered over the past months and really has kept on smiling all the time. And a final person from the organizing committee, and I think uh, you will all agree uh, with me, for me he's really a hero and a genius, and that's uh, Ruland. <laughs> Head of our communications, but who has also really uh, kept this all together and led the team and I think the organization has really been flawless. So Ruland, we deliberately went for a unisex uh, present uh, because uh, these are the times, so take the flowers and I will leave the kisses. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> May I just echo Anne's words, this is really one for the entire team, but uh, thanks a lot. Too much honor for me though. <laughs> Now, it may not be so usual, but really, um, we have had a fantastic conference organizing, a PCO, as they call it, professional conference organizer. We have been working very, very closely with uh, several people at uh, Medi Congress. They have become part of ITM almost, and uh, it's really been such a pleasure, and you have been so great in not just organizing the conference, but in the abstract management, in supporting us all the way. So I really 
wanted to thank you too and also provide you. The funny thing is they arranged the flowers for the other uh, participants as we had to arrange the flowers for them. So it is, uh, <laughs> please, uh, Els and Charlotte. but I thought she was not in the room and she has been more behind and that's Laurence. Thank you very much who has taken care of all the subscriptions. And I know, is, is Werner here? No. But uh, you can take the flowers for Werner and really thank him. I'm, I'm not supposed to do this, but if ever you need a good PCO, well, I can recommend one. Thank you, thank you very much and uh, hope for a future. Is, is it not? <laughs> this one is for me. No, 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 of course not. <laughs> no, no. One thing, and, and you know, or I've told you, I'm also on the board of governors of the zoo, and this was for them also the first time they had such a big meeting for several days. And I think the staff of this venue has really been amazing. Uh, they have been very client friendly to speak in business terms. They were just nice people and they have taken very good care of us. I think the venue was a great factor in the success, not just the buildings, but also the little garden in front, um, the butterflies in the veranda, uh, but also all the food on the table, which was absolutely excellent. It has, I think, also helped to bring us through this week. And I'm not really sure whether whom I should ask from the support staff. I don't think Yo is in the room, but can I ask you to come forward and take this? <laughs> These flowers uh, for all the staff of the center. You have done an amazing job. Thank you very much. So it's been very nice for us. I think finally all of you, I think the participants made the conference and also showed the strategic way forward without having to express it. Okay, these are, uh, you know, it's like that every day. <laughs> uh, I am feel sorry that uh, the, this afternoon we have to go back to office, uh, Jean Christophe, and prepare the budget for next year and uh, arrange some uh, things and uh, try to integrate or to hide the deficit of this conference in some different lines in, in our books. So I really would like to thank Tamara. I have scared her all week long and still she took up the challenge uh, to organize this in two years and I really look forward to the Liverpool meeting the more because this will be the first month of my retirement and so this is my last meeting, active meeting uh, of ECMI. And uh, I think I've seen already a few things of which I say, well, that might be a nice destination for my first trip after leaving ITM. Thank you very much, Tamara. <laughs> Thank you very much, of course, our co-organizers, uh, Because Held and FestMe. And I think both are represented by Carl Geisling. Carl, it has really been a very interesting, uh, but also very enjoyable uh, collaboration. And so many thanks also to Esther and all the members of the FESMI board and of the BICOS Health Steering Group. Let us not forget all these people, most of them also personally organized at least one session, and they were really a driving force uh, uh, beyond, be, behind, particularly the implementation and the public health sessions. So thank you very much to our co-organizers, um, and really, they, they deserve an applause also as well. And uh, the only thing I can say now is go forth and multiply. I mean, go home, spread the word, have safe travels, 
and keep on the good work, keep on communicating. See you in two years or hopefully in between here at ITM or in the field. And by this, I officially declare the closure of this meeting. Thank you all very much.